Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about practice and programming and my personal exercise routine. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, what sort of practice sessions do you go through when you wanted to improve your coding skills? And the short answer is I have a a very strict rule, which is pretty much that I only practice things that are realistic. Let me explain. So the first thing of this, by, by the by, with this question, what you did you, I used to do in order to practice my coding? Now that indicates that I'm not doing it today. And that is very, very, very false, my friends. If you didn't realize this, one of the reasons why I feel almost a little bit bad about, um, well, I wouldn't, let's not say bad, I feel flattered. I feel very flattered that there are some people on my little channel here who asks me, Frederick, why aren't you, haven't you monetized this thing that you're doing? Why aren't you putting up donation uh, accounts and promoting and asking people to subscribe and stuff like that? Well, I'll tell you why. Apart from the fact that I really just enjoy helping people out, the other part is that this, this is part of my personal education. All I'm doing right here, right now. The, that's the main, one of the main purposes behind this little channel of mine. Now, all the videos that I'm making, both the speaking videos and the um, coding videos are part of my personal development. So if you go back and you take a look at the first videos where I speak, where like right now, like how we're talking right now. Now, I'm not a public speaker of any repute, but I hope that we can agree that the fluency and the way that I structure my speech is much better today than it used to be two years ago, which is roughly when I started doing this. And that's part of it, because I have I understood earlier that in order for me to be to become the well to achieve all the the ambitions that I have for myself with this programming thing that I'm doing, I would need to improve in this area. And trust me, I'm not done, not by a long shot. There is so much more public um, speaking uh, to be done, and there's so much more teaching that I need to do in order for me to progress even further. And the same goes for the coding videos. So these are part of my practice routines. When I teach you something in the coding videos, I'm not teaching you the basics. And that's not just because I find it extremely dull and because it's been done a million times over. There's so many videos out there on the internet where you can learn how to use React hooks or how to set up a to-do app or learn the basic of, basics of Angular or learn how to set up a node server or whatever. These are it, there's a saturation of all of this content. What is lacking, on the other hand, is to people teaching you mindset, teaching you complicated things, things that are actually relevant in the daily work that you do. And for most, this is, because I would say, this is some of the most important stuff that you can learn once you have progressed beyond being a beginner. But the, most of the stuff that is out there is for beginners. And there's not that much content for people who are in their early stages of becoming a professional or that that's pretty much it and then because the gap there is oh you're a total beginner or you are a seasoned veteran watching a tech talk that's usually the jump and i wouldn't i want it to be somewhere in between because i know that some of the best learnings that i can learn and teach myself is through trying to explain complicated topics to other people so these videos where I share with you how to set up a canary release or how I share with you how to create reusable React components or setting up type safety in a TypeScript application, these sorts of things, these are practice routines for me. That's one way of practicing and you can do the same thing. You don't have to be a master programmer not or anything like that to be able to make some educational videos. You put it at your level and use it as a way to actually to motivate yourself because I feel very motivated to continue experimenting and trying out new things and figuring out new things that I want to teach people through my videos because when you're in the public eye just a little bit because this is I mean this is a small little channel that I just maintain for my own sake that 
but the people that give you feedback on what you're doing and stating that oh this is great i'm learning so much this gives you even more incentive to keep to stick with it and apart from that everything is around realistic projects uh, just as i was saying just as with the videos it's all about realistic projects so if i have a work issue and i feel like i have the time i have tons of projects that i have created for my job where i know that oh the user relationships team they are having some issues with some of their daily tasks and i go well that could be kind of fun to see if i can solve that and then i build a small system that solves that problem in my spare time just to practice always i never ever do these code kata things maybe i should do more of that because i know that it's also very helpful to do this it's just that i've found that it's it's the same, uh, there's a risk of doing code katas and like these algorithmic types of things primarily and the risk is that you do this it's very similar to how juniors get a very r- rough wake up call when they start going into the going into the industry well, because basically what they're doing is that they're learning how to write an algorithm that they're not really learning how to work as a, at a professional level real projects are much more there's so much more thinking going on so such a broader perspective that you need in order to make a full-fledged well-working product than it is to make a single algorithm and I th- to give you an analogy it's like thinking it's like staring at a single brick of a house and being really good at placing that brick versus knowing how to build the entire house that's the difference i'm talking about and real projects are much more like building a house rather than placing a single brick which then that's probably the best description i can give you so that's also a big part of my personal development process and i've been doing this since i was in since i was starting out as a programmer the important part for me was always and this is the secret that's my only secret it has to feel real i don't want to learn and build on things that are like toys because toys toys are toys it's great in the beginning i always the, this what i usually do when i'm learning a new language such as when i started learning rust is to okay i'll create a rest api i will create a cli of some sort or something like that it's the, i create the standard stuff and then i work my way up to more realistic projects and then i stick there and then i stick uh, with the realistic projects so what I want you to take away from this is that my personal training regimen as a software developer, because that is very much how I look at it. This morning little discussion that you and I have, well, it's technically a monologue if we're going to be honest, but I pretend that you're answering and you're actually sitting all here in my bathroom. It would be very crowded, but anywho, this is just an exercise for me. And this is part of it. It's part of it to feel emotionally comfortable communicating with people, trying your best to learn how to talk in such a fashion that my ideas are relayed in a good fashion. Because that is a very important part of becoming a successful software software developer or a tech lead or something like that. Trust me when I say this, I have seen an enormous rise in my personal productivity and impact in uh, my company and my overall career from just starting to talk with people about my ideas and thoughts on on programming you can do the same thing other parts of my training regimen includes having training videos where i teach you a concept that i use at work and see if i can explain it to you in in a way that makes sense because that it's a way for me to check that i actually know what i'm talking about apart from that having things such as personal projects realistic personal projects where i build something either for my girlfriend or for my job or something like that is also part of it and that's how you should think about it or rather that's how i think about it and i think that it's a very healthy mindset to have think about your personal development and your software skills as going to the gym this is exercise for the mind guys you should go to the gym to stay healthy and you should have realistic projects and personal training routines and training sessions where you get to practice your moneymaker because this is my moneymaker have a great day